Tell me something that's an absolute flex to a niche group but means nothing to the majority. I'll go first. I have two of these. New bike day. So here we have a brand new RSP5 and of course a brand new ACT. Which one do you want first? The carbon or the aluminum? They're both fine. First, RSP. I went with the black and white version and that's because you guys have seen the bird spoke build. I've talked about them, but obviously have not ridden them yet. So this is going to be the bike that this wheel set actually goes on. So the bike's finally here. We can finally do a review on this, but this is going to be another video. If you look close in this white and black frame, there's a little bit of like extra design in the white. So it's not a pure white. You can only really see it up close. Now the new race bike. Here it is, a freshie. Yes, it's the exact same. We're keeping the same teal colors this year, so there's no need to kind of change the graphics. So much goes into a custom paint job like this. There's no reason to only do it for one year. We really like this one. I love the look of everything, all the brandings around it, so we kept it the same. All right, so I have a few ideas for this video, or I guess one main idea. I'm gonna get both these bikes built up and then I'll go into detail about things and we'll talk a little more. Before we get into the build, I wanted to point out something I thought was pretty cool. At brgstore.com, you can get tie bolts for literally pretty much everything on your bike. One of those tie bolts are to replace the main bolt in your pivotal seat. As soon as I pulled it out of the package, it's pretty obvious the weight difference, so I thought it would be cool just to kind of show that I think this would be the biggest difference out of all of them. Like I talk about very often, uh, we're looking for those one percenters, you know? Honestly, I don't really care if my bike's the lightest one out there, but I do enjoy nerding out and sharing all this information. So every ounce we save, it's those little one percenters to add up, you know? So 1.1 ounce for the steel bolt, 0.48 ounces for the tie bolt, so half an ounce. Grams, that's 13 grams for the tie versus 32 grams for the steel bolt. When you look at it, like you put tie spokes on, you got 36 spokes per wheel, so all those little saves add up, you know. I wish I had the time to actually weigh everything and see how much weight we save by using tie bolts versus steel but I don't like nerding out that much. I wanna get this bike together. We're done, finally. Not finally in a bad way, but anytime I build a new bike, uh, especially a race bike, you're making everything absolutely perfect how you want it. So everything's getting cut to size and you're getting really anal, which is great. But when you do it twice at the same time, I realize how time consuming it is. I don't think I've ever actually built two dial race bikes on the same day, so yeah. Anyways, we're going to push this one off to the side for now, and we're going to go over the RSP. The 2023 RSP 5.0. All of us on the team, we always build up a spare. We keep our nice carbon race bike fresh for race weekend. We still ride on it, obviously. But when you build a nice race bike, everything's kind of built around performance. You don't want to do all your track sessions, all your sprint sessions, and everything on that bike. Obviously, not everyone has the freedom of that, of course, I know. I actually haven't really done that until my days on Chase, so I'm very grateful and thankful for, uh, to be able to do that. But these bikes are built exactly the same. One's obviously aluminum and one's carbon. Everything else is identical besides these wheels. We'll get to these wheels later. But I wanted to go over everything on the bike and hopefully it helps you build your next bike. And I'll do the same thing on the carbon. So let's go. First off, we have Shimano XTR disc brakes. We have the ODI Pro Series grips. I've actually switched my grips up a little bit. I, uh, I never really stick with one grip all the time. Normally, when I need new grips, I go to whatever's just in my drawer. But with this one, I actually went with the half waffle because I don't really know why. I just wanted to try something different. You know, when I'm on the gate, I'm wrenching on those grips, ready to snap, maybe the half waffle gives a little extra leverage. I don't know. It was enough justification to uh, put them on. 
8 inch bars, but you'll see this bar and stem combo is not my normal 11 setup. Chase's brand 11 doesn't actually make a drop stem, which I like a drop front load stem. Um, it just gets me a little lower being a short guy. I want my front end really low. I'm also waiting on a shorter 11 bar that's not in stock currently. So, so the cockpit area is a little different than normal, especially on this bike. We just got a polished stem and some old black 8 inch bars. Icon fork. The RSP XL Plus frame, which is a 21.25. Back here we got the 11 seat, the 11 carbon seat post, 175 DXR cranks with the new HT T2 SX pedal. We have a 46 tooth 11 sprocket. Chain is a KMC half link chain. Yes, my color's a little mixed match. I did the red seat post clamp. I thought it'd just be a cool tie-in to the whole bike. I forgot to order a black one and I had a red one. But the gold was by accident. I just didn't have any other chains. I know people are going to ask about this spider being black. Normally DXRs are polished, right? Well, I like to customize everything. So I taped off the crank and actually just painted the spider. Simple. Something new about the RSP I think is really cool is the internal routing. The routing goes into the chain stay, through the bottom bracket, up the down tube, and out of the head tube. And you actually have this little foam sleeve that you slide in over your cable. So the idea is to have no like cable rattle on the inside, and then now there's no exposed cables. Everything that is exposed is right here in front of the handlebars, and obviously right where it comes from the caliper into the chain stay. I think that's an awesome feature. It keeps everything nice and clean. Also, there's no V-brake mounts on these, so if you get the RSP, expect to be running the disc brake. I have the 11 brake adapter. Goes right onto the axle, super simple. Makes everything uh, go together really nice. What I will say, I'm not one that reads directions very well. When I built this bike, I built the whole bike before I put the cables on. Well, you need the bottom bracket out before you run the cable through the frame. So if you're building an RSP, go ahead and run your cables before you start the whole build process. It'll make everything a little easier for you. All right, let's talk about these wheels a bit. These are the bird spoke wheels. Maxxis Torch front and rear. Yes, I normally race with the DTH, but I'm running low, so I'm keeping the DTHs for race mode. 1.95 in the front, 1.75 in the rear. We have the special Onyx hook flange hub with 3 8 axles with black bird spokes and then our normal icon carbon rims but we have a little bit of issue the whole plan for this video was to show the build and then we're going to do a comparison i wanted to make this video be aluminum versus carbon since they're both completely identical bikes besides the frames I wanted to put them against the clock and actually see which one's faster, aluminum or carbon. Yes, ideally the carbon is meant to be faster, right? But numbers don't lie, it's fun to do it and I actually wanted to test it because I've never actually seen the numbers for myself. But when we test stuff like that, we need to have all the elements identical, right? So my race wheels, the Onyx hubs, tie spokes, Icon carbon rims, with the 20 mil rear won't actually fit on the RSP. I was gonna take the race wheels off my other bike, that way they'd be completely identical. So I feel like the numbers aren't gonna be that true testing an aluminum frame against the carbon with bird spoke wheels that we also haven't tested yet. So we gotta figure out something on that. I think I'm gonna have to work backwards. So we're gonna do a video testing the bird spokes on the carbon bike with those race wheels, with the tie spokes against the bird spokes. And then once we see where those numbers come back, then we're gonna come back and we'll do a video about testing aluminum versus carbon. Yeah, I just confused myself explaining that to you guys. Let's show you the new race bike. Oh, this is a beauty. Yes, it's the same color scheme pretty much as my other one, but it's just, Everything's fresh about it, and I love this one even more than my last one because 
The white did look good, but nothing beats black. There's a lot more black on this one. Like I said, they are completely identical. Up here, same XTR brakes, same ODI Pro Series grips. Bars, we do have the 11 bars because they're brand new eights. But again, waiting on different sizes, so that's gonna change. You'll notice, I didn't point it out on the other one, my steer tube is uncut above the stem. I know a lot of people do that, but I'm just very anal and I think that's very ugly when a steer tube is sticking out of the top. So let's just cut that steer tube where it needs to be and actually make it flush with the stem, kids. Because that's when it starts looking really pro. I know a lot of people don't want to cut them because it's for a resale value of the fork, but yeah, anyways, if you can, cut the steer tube, make it clean. Since I'm changing my cockpit area a little bit, I had to leave that because I don't know where my new stem is gonna actually sit, so that's why I haven't cut mine personally. Icon carbon tapered fork, wheels are the same as the other one, minus the bird spokes. We have tie spokes on here with black onyx hubs, black carbon with teal icon rims. Frame, ACT 1.2, same as my last year's bike, same size, XL Plus, which is a 21 and a quarter, same seat, same seat post, same clamp, same 175 Shimano DXR cranks, also painted the spider, so that all looks consistent. You'll see I have a black chain on here, so it looks a little cleaner. 46 tooth sprocket. We have the Onyx Ultra SS hub on the race bike because this is the 20 mil axle, unlike the other one being the 3.8 axles. XCR calipers, the carbon frame cable runs up the seat stay, but it actually goes in on the top tube on this bike and everything is run internal on the front half. Maybe the uh, 2.0 ACT, we won't see any cables. Tires, race setup, Maxxis, DTH, 1.75 in the rear. We got two Bolito tubes in the rear. Front, we have the Maxxis 1.95 torch. I personally like the torch in the front because it's got a little more of a side groove. When you're really leaning in those asphalt turns, there's something to really kind of push and grab on the asphalt, you know what I'm saying? The DTH doesn't have those side grooves, it's just kind of diagonal ones, but we have the back and forth groove up top, which I think, personally, when we're coming out of the gate, when the tire has something to push on, it's always grabbing something, unlike those smooth surfaces on some of the tires now, it's just smooth, so if you have any kind of unevenness, or I don't know how to describe it, in my head, a tire that has something to bite a little more, but also rolls really fast, it's just gonna be a little more consistent on that snap. Now you all know what my bike is equipped with, so if there's anything on here that you wanna get, jump online, you can pick it all out. Pretty much everything on these bikes are linked below in the description, and you can pick them all up at brgstore.com. Stay tuned, we got more testing videos to come. Like I said, testing the bird spokes, then we're gonna test aluminum versus carbon. So save your money. Make you a rad race bike because you'll be proud of it when you get on the track. Until next time, see you on the next one. Peace. Well, I don't know what I was thinking. I almost forgot the most important part. We didn't weigh the bikes. Carbon race bike is 18 and a half pounds and 8.4 kilos. Actually a little heavier than I expected it to be. Let's check the aluminum. 18.6 kilos, 8.4. Huh. That's a little different than I expected this video to end. Same weight.